2010, um, RDB and African Park signed a PPP, Public Private Partnership, where we formed a company called Akagera Management Company. Akagera Management Company is the partnership between the two entities. Um, it's a limited company established in Rwanda um, and we are answerable to a board of directors um, and we manage on behalf of the government. That does not mean Akagera is, has been sold or anything like that. It means we're managing the national asset on behalf of the government. And some of our prerogatives there have been in that 12 years since 2010, when we came onto the ground, we realized it's a super special place, but there's a lot of things to be done. Um, primarily, to keep a place safe, the integrity of Akagera National Park, we really had to review the security, the law enforcement, to try and reduce any impact from illegal activities such as poaching and stuff like that. We did have a key founder population of a lot of animals, um, but their numbers were low. So by creating the integrity and security of this national park over the years, animal numbers have thrived and snowballed and grown in numbers across the whole plethora of animals from the warthogs up to the elephants. Some people in 2010 thought there was only one elephant called Mutuare here. It wasn't true, there was over 60. And today we have over 110. So it just shows some of the examples of growth. Um, upon securing the integrity of um, Akagera National Park, the law enforcement building the capacity of staff, um, we started to look more at the tourism, the community collaboration, the dialogue, um, because we take on the full management of conservation areas. So once we got all of these things in motion, um, it really in 2013 we really were starting to be able to form the real vision of where we would see um, Akagera in the next 15, 20 years and where we wanted to go. And some of those prerogatives were to bring back species that used to be here. Another species that used to be here was the East African Black Rhino. There's less than 900 of them left in the world. Um, so we wanted to bring them back and in 2017 we, again we managed to bring back 18 and they're all thriving today. Um, and it became a conduit for many things, the success of those rhinos. The zoos in Europe um, decided to support with five rhinos in 2019, which are here um, and the ones that survived are doing well. Um, but this highlights Akagera's management, African parks, but also highlights the contribution and the value that the government of Rwanda, RDB, puts to conservation to ensuring these areas are brought back to what they used to be. So over the last 12 years, we have slowly made progress um, to, to bring back Akagera. Um, and most importantly, in my view, you know, bring back some species that are actually struggling across the continent. Lion, if you go on Google today, lion numbers are struggling. They don't have safe places. Black rhinos are struggling. They don't have safe places. So to bring them back to Rwanda, to Akagera, to a safe place, to um, a country where the government really does support the initiatives and then supports the management of the park is absolutely fantastic. Those white rhinos had been in court in South Africa about three months ago, underwent quarantine and have been in a central location in South Africa where we were monitoring them, doing health checks and seeing how their condition was and then building them up in condition as well to ensure they were healthy to travel and the animals that have come are, are 30 animals, um, 19 female, 11 males, which is a great combination because um, female, higher percentage of females means a quicker reproduction and a quicker set um, establishment of the what we call a founder population to Akagera National Park. A founder population is a tangible population or number of animals that will allow us to build up the population quicker. If we just had one male and one female, it would take so many years to actually get white rhino conservation going. Whereas right now we have a good founder population, 19 females, 11 males, and we really look forward to the future of having the first generation of white rhinos born in, in Rwanda in, in two years. In my view, in two years time, when we have our first white rhinos, first generation white rhinos born in Rwanda, that will be the success of this program. Okay, so we still have a huge amount of work and it's all of our responsibilities, even the media, the teams here, to help us um, achieve that 
keep on promoting for conservation, promoting for white rhino conservation and other species in general, and more importantly, habitat um, management, because that's only possible because we've kept Akagera safe that the white rhinos could come here. The final partner is definitely the RDB, Rwanda Development Board, in allowing this to happen, being really um, progressive, really supporting, and going above and beyond to, to ensure this happens um, and uh, allow this to happen. Um, and it's an absolute congratulations to everyone who's been part of that to, to do this. We believe they're going to thrive here. We've had a lot of assessments done before this happened. Again, it just didn't happen by clicking the hands. Yeah, There was assessments, checking on the feed, on the grass, to see what their preferences and knowing what their preferences are and we believe they're actually going to thrive in Akagera National Park and do very very well. Yesterday afternoon we offloaded them all from here in the south to the north and they all walked out comfortably. They've all had a chance to drink because imagine not having water for 40 hours while you're in a crate. They've all topped up on their on their liquids on their water and they're already starting to graze the landscape the grass and we've also brought some supplement food for them just to, to ease them into this, this move. Um, for us to travel 40, hour, 40 hours on a plane is big enough. Just imagine wild animals in crates for 40 hours. So on that side of things, everything has gone superbly well, thanks to all the stakeholders, all the partners, and we hope you can spread the good word um, for conservation for white rhinos and um, for Akagera and Rwanda. This is um, a very special moment for us in Rwanda. And we are very delighted to welcome 30 white rhinos um, that you see are very healthy and they will be thriving for sure, like uh, Simon has said, into this Akagera National Park. But before I go on with my uh, remarks of the day today, I'd like to really thank the team of experts, the vets, the wildlife experts from South Africa Conservation Solutions, from African Parks, from our own team, the Rana Development Board, and everyone uh, who's been part of this. And of course, without forgetting uh, Howard Buffett, that has been um, a great supporter of conservation in Rwanda for the last many years. This, what we're celebrating today, would not have been possible if we were not all collaborating for um, to, to be able to deliver results for wildlife conservation, but impactful wildlife conservation. As you know, uh, conservation, uh, our conservation journey, uh, our conservation journey today um, has been really enabling a thriving tourism industry in Rwanda. So these things that we're doing today, we're not translocating or we're not just celebrating that these animals have found obviously a secure and safe place, uh, but they will be enabling. Um, it will be just uh, also um, adding to uh, adding value to our tourism industry, um, creating more conservation value into this national park and also uh, for the country, but most importantly delivering results for communities uh, that we've been partnering for the last many years to make conservation a success story in Rwanda. The white rhinos that arrived in the country um, yesterday, 28th November, were translocated from Pinda Game Reserve uh, to, in South Africa to Rwanda in Akagera National Park. This initiative um, has been thought about in the, in, with the aim to bolster the protection, their protection in the wild. I think Simon did mention why it's important to continue to protect them um, and I will not come back to that. He also mentioned something that is very important. This translocation is the largest single rhino translocation ever undertaken providing a historic milestone for Rwanda and the long-term conservation of these vulnerable species. Of course, it follows other reintroductions that we've done in this national park. Just did mention it earlier. In 2017, we undertook our first reintroduction of rhinos into this national park, where we saw 18 eastern black rhinos um, released in Akadia National Park, making a return of the species to Rwanda after a 10-year absence. 
and in 2019 we brought in five more. Today's translocation brings our total number of rhinos to 56 and this is a great um, milestone. Like just did mention, they also dispatch across different areas so that people can enjoy them across um, the national park. You well know that there is the south, there is the north, but most importantly also taking advantage of what the landscape, uh, the diverse landscape that we have has to offer. Thanks to progressive conservation policies in South Africa and Rwanda, we have an opportunity to establish these species in a secure Rwanda park where their numbers will definitely grow. We, have, we hope to achieve uh, the long-term conservation of white rhinos in Africa by extending their range and creating another breeding node for the species in Rwanda. Like just said, uh, it's our first time that we have the white rhinos in Rwanda, so us being an extension of a secure place for them to thrive is really a milestone and we're proud of it and we're committed to continue their preservation, their conservation and um, creating more conservation value. In addition, in addition to achieving this, the long-term survival of the white rhinos, we hope that they will help boost the park's contribution to Rwanda's tourism economy as we are recovering the tourism industry, um, revenues that we all lost, as you know the world has been undergoing a heavy and uh, challenging uh, pandemic that keeps us challenged all the time but does not stop us to continue to be innovative, creative as we look at uh, recovery this, recovering this important um, sector that, due to its uh, important contribution to the Rwanda's economy. This is in line with our broad vision for a sustainable sector whereby diversity conservation benefits both people and wildlife. I would like to thank again African Parks, which has managed Akagina National Park through a partnership with RDB since 2010. Through our partnership, law enforcement, which is key to the survival of endangered species, has been boosted. Poaching has been curbed. Records show that not a single elephant has been poached over the last 12 years. Additionally, not a single rhino has been poached since the introduction into Akagera National Park four years ago. The park management also has closely worked with local communities to transform Akagera into a secure, income-generating landscape for the benefit of people and wildlife. You probably know about the tourism revenue sharing policy, which um, we, through which we have been uh, supporting and working together closely with communities in preservation and conservation of national parks. Through that policy across Rwanda, we've been able to support over 780 projects through 6.5 billion Rwanda francs. And 150 projects here have been for, uh, supported uh, through that revenue sharing, uh, uh, revenue sharing policy with over 2.4 billion Rwanda francs invested into community uh, livelihood improvement projects. That's before we add the, the benefits uh, of job creation the benefits of small enterprises that have been created by African uh, by Akagera Management Company to create value for communities as conservation uh, creates value, direct value for, for the people. And therefore, these successes that we're celebrating today do not only stop at the wild, wild rhinos that we are introducing today, is also to show that we are committed as a country with our partners and thoughtful partners that continue to create value for people and our economy and of course these um, ecologic, ecologically important uh, landscapes. Through our joint efforts will mean a secure and growing white pine population so that Kagera National Park is considered a pivotal a contributor to meaningful conservation of the white pine and other wildlife regionally and, and on the continent. Yeah, so my name is Simon Naylor, I'm the conservation manager for and Beyond and the uh, manager for the rhinos or the park in, in South Africa where these rhinos have been donated from called uh, and Beyond Pinder Private Game Reserve um, and so we've, we've donated 30 white rhinos to Akagera National Park and uh, obviously that is managed uh, by African Parks in collaboration with the Rwanda Development Board and um, yeah so this is 
for us a very historic um, operation or project. Um, it's, to our knowledge, the largest single translocation of, of rhinos, any rhino species uh, ever in the world. And uh, we're very honored and proud to be, in, you know, as part of the project um, that's making this groundbreaking move. And I think the significance is for the future of white rhinos in Africa. Um, in the last uh, 10 years, uh, more than 10,000 white rhinos uh, and rhinos have been shot and killed, mostly in South Africa, for the illegal horn trade. And the use, there's a high demand for the horn, um, which obviously sits on the, on, the end, on the nose of these rhinos in the Far East mainly Vietnam and China um, and so that's led to the demise of the species across the continent and um, so this project is really I think significant because it's one step, one major step in trying to secure the future of, uh, of these rhinos uh, in Africa. Um, it's, it's, this park has the potential in years to come to be of, you know, to be one of the sort of possibly the remaining uh, populations of the species left. And uh, so it's very, very important, I think, uh, to, to find new homes, new populations for these white rhinos. And this number of 30 is a, is a really good number to start or to kickstart that, uh, that process. Um, you know, the move, these animals, as you can see, are, are really doing well and healthy after a really tire, tiresome journey for them. Uh, it was almost 48 hours from, from when we first darted them in, in South Africa in Pinda to arriving uh, here. But obviously every step along the way has been carefully thought out and planned to reduce the risk of anything um, happening to these, to these rhinos. And obviously it's been really challenging to do it uh, in these times. You know, we sit in a, in a global um, COVID pandemic which which can create even more complications for, for the translocation. So yeah, we're very happy with, the, with how it's gone so far. Um, you know, if you can see now, they, they're grazing, they have, uh, they have water. Um, and uh, yeah, looking around the, the park, it's my first time here to Akagera. And uh, I really believe that this is perfect, perfect uh, white rhino habitat. There's a lot of grass, there's a lot of water. And obviously the team at African Parks will, um, we are very confident, will manage them responsibly. Uh, they will keep them secure. Um, they will manage, manage them um, ecologically. And uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's no reason why this population of 30 can become 60, 100, 150, 200 in the years to come. And there aren't really many large populations left in, in Africa. And uh, you can count on your hand uh, or two hands, populations that have more than a hundred white rhinos, and so, uh, and even those are not secure. So I think uh, it's it's very very important for us, not only as um, South Africans or Rwandans, but certainly as Africans, to to look after and keep these white rhinos secure because they are the second largest um, land mammal on Earth. And uh, we have a responsibility to, to, to take care of them and, and keep them secure. And obviously having them, you know, they are one of the big five. And so a very big draw card for, for tour, tourists. And um, we have no doubt that this, uh, this translocation and the presence of White Rhino here will boost the, the economy of, um, you know, of the country. Um, it hopefully should draw more visitors to, to Akagera to raise the profile of the park not just for tourism, but as a, as a place of, of, of conservation um, and biodiversity.